retrospect, if I hadn't studied Chinese, I wouldn't have been able to take advantage of the opportunities that came later. It was absolutely vital. When I was a kid, my dad was a reporter, and so we lived overseas a little bit. But it never really, I never really got a clear sense from from that experience that this was something I wanted to do until I got a little bit older and realized that it really is, in a, it, you know, journalism is a way that you can travel the world and talk to interesting people and do interesting things and make a career out of it. And um, it has turned out to be an astonishing way to learn about life and to learn about the world. So um, when I started, I was like a lot of reporters in a newsroom in the U.S. and eventually got assigned overseas, went to the war in Iraq, spent a few years there, and then came to China. And um, haven't really had a chance to take a deep breath ever since. Being a journalist in Beijing is a kind of uh, unusual experience for a very specific reason, which is that you are in, after all, the capital of an authoritarian state. And yet, at the same time, you're at the intersection of all of the most interesting ideas in China. And this is where the art is happening, this is where the film is happening. And the combination of being both the political capital, the financial capital, in some ways here for economic policy at least, and then of course the cultural capital is really unique. There's a sort of New York versus Boston, Beijing versus Shanghai divide. And I think, uh, from my perspective, it's an easy one, actually. I mean, Beijing, after all, yeah, in some ways it's actually easier to move to Shanghai as an American because, after all, it feels more like home, it's familiar. And that's, from my perspective, all the more reason not to do so, particularly if you're somebody who's interested in getting to understand China. I mean, Beijing is truly where the brain of the country is right now. This is where the decisions are being made. This is where the most dynamic people are coming. Look, let's be honest, the air in Beijing is not always what you want it to be, and the traffic is tough. From my perspective, those kinds of things wash away pretty quickly because they just stop mattering when the place is as interesting as it is. I mean, a friend of mine once said, and I think he's right, living in Beijing doesn't always feel very good physically, except that you're so incredibly stimulated mentally that you can't possibly imagine living. You know, I think my advice would be if I was coming to China now and wanted to learn about this place, it's actually quite easy to live here and to comfort yourself with all of the Western things that have come into Beijing. And it's you can actually have quite um, a lot of, there's a lot of home here if you're looking for it. You can go out and get a hamburger, it's not that hard to find. And it's actually harder and it's much, much more worthwhile to put that stuff aside for a while and actually burrow into the city that you're coming to. And it's hugely, hugely rewarding. I mean, there's, um, when I came here for the first time, I wish somebody had told me that just wait six months before you go back to get Western food and go in search of people to talk to in English, because you'll have no shortage of that when you go home. But actually, for the period you're here, just savor every moment of it and go out and try to maximize.